بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ الصف چیپٹر سکسٹی ون ورسز ون ٹو فورٹین دا سسٹم آف دین از اے ریالٹی دیز آر دا ریفرنسز اینڈ دس از آر کانٹیکٹ ان کیس دیر از این انکوائری آر کویسٹ ریگارڈنگ دس پریزنٹیشن اور آر پریویس پریزنٹیشنس این اوور ویو آف ٹو ڈیز پریزنٹیشن دا آؤٹر یونیورس پریزینٹس اٹ سیلف ایز اے ماڈل فار مین ٹو ٹیک لائف سیریسلی اینڈ ٹو فالو دا وہی آف اللہ ٹو گیٹ دا بیسٹ آؤٹ آف ہز انڈیویجول اینڈ کلیکٹیو لائف اینڈ دیٹ از امپورٹنٹ دیٹ یونیورس از آرگنائز ان اے وے اینڈ وہی ہیز پرووائڈیڈ دا لائف دیٹ وی کین گیٹ بیسٹ آؤٹ آف آس انڈیویجولی ایز ویل ایز تھرو آر کلیکٹیو لائف One of the values is to have harmony between his word and deed. Never say something which is not meant to be carried out. It is a serious lapse of human character. And this is actually the core message of this surah. Striving on this path means not only to make one's own wealth and possessions available in this cause of Allah, but also to be willing to lay down one's life as and when the need arises in the tussle between Haq and Batil. Models of messengers such as Musa and Isa are there to help us to learn from the challenges faced by them in their eras. Deen is completed as a system in the Quran and if human efforts are focused in this direction collectively, then this Deen as a system is bound to get established at some point in time. There are a couple of verses on this aspect. They are very interesting and we will cover that detail. Allah invites Mu'mineen to carry out those responsibilities which the Qur'an has related to him and in this way we not only understand the purpose of human creation but also bring out all those latent potentials which are meant to be manifested during the course of living this life of ours. First verse of today's presentation and surah as well, 61.1 Everything in the universe is carrying out its assigned task as per Mashiach of Allah. Whatever is in the highs and lows of the universe, all is busily functioning in the accomplishment of the defined program of Allah. His law is possessor of great authority and control, but his authority is based on supreme wisdom. That is called hikmat in the language of the Quran. The authority of the law is always based on wisdom, and this is in relation to the Quran. Human laws are not based on wisdom. These are the laws of Allah which are based on wisdom. Setting scene for the system of Deen 61.1 The Quran opens this surah with a powerful statement about the fact that everything in the universe, including the human world, follows Allah's laws. There is no exception in this. An interesting thing about these laws is that we have to look for them. Because, for example, law of requital works over a longer period of time in order to establish its presence, its functioning in our world. If we smoke a cigarette for a very long time, only then cancer develops. So these are the kind of things we should keep in mind and explain to others. To the superficial glance, it appears as if man-made systems are excluded from this st- statement i.e. we do not apparently see the laws of Allah functioning in the world which is organized and managed by human intellect. And that is the reason. Because Allah's laws give us time for respite. So it takes longer. For example, even death arrives in normal cases after many, many years. However, if we look at it more closely and incisively, then this reality dawns on us that the man-made systems are also subject to outcomes as per the law of requital of Allah, And this includes the law of cause and effect in the physical domain too. Next is, this aspect becomes glaringly ob- obvious when we analyze the man-made, man-devised system in the light of the permanent value. For example, Quran says, Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bikawmin hatta yugayiru ma bianfusihim. Allah does not change the state of a nation until they change what is within their psyche. The way human choice and intent is applied in the world decides the nature of the world they wish to live in collectively. So the world which we find around us is a sum total of all those actions which have gone in the past and what people who control the affairs of the world are doing and of course all those who are following them as well willingly. Those who are unwilling, of course, they stand separately from them. 
It means we have the choice whether to follow the Quran or not, but we do not have the choice to create a world which is free from fear, grief, chaos, and conflict by going against its value system. So Quran gives us the criteria that if you're following the man device system, this is what will happen. If you follow Allah's system, then this is these will be the signs and this is what is going to happen. Expanding this uh, aspect a bit further, if we look at the functioning of the universe, there is harmony and smooth functioning visible everywhere in every aspect of it. For example, the sun rises quietly according to its program and there is never any interruption in its functioning. The same goes for the moon. I've just given these two examples, but if we look around, there are examples everywhere throughout the physical world. The earth revolves on its axis and also goes around the sun and we never hear any noise or feel any vibration. It is all there to invite man to reflect in these and other numerous signs in the outer and inner world in order to understand their meanings and to make a choice to live life free from noises and vibrations under the domain of Wahi of Allah. Next point is Allah is Aziz and Hakim. Aziz means powerful and Hakim means, of course, he uses his, his power according to his own laws, which are well defined and man can understand those laws. And man is always bestowed with power, finite in extent, which he unleashes during the course of his life in the world. However, if he does not bring this power under the domain of the Wahi of Allah, then he resorts to abuse of this power and creates problems for himself and his fellow beings. So we should take this, um, any idea, any thought out of our mind that human power can be useful across the world for most of, of for mankind. It will be it will be favorable to few vested interests, but most of the time human power unleashes tyranny and chaos in the world. Contrary to the smooth and harmonious functioning of the outer world under the laws of Allah, man creates disharmony and chaos by ignoring the laws related to the development of his self. Let us go to the next two verses, harmony between word and deed. Ya yuhallazina amanu lima takuluna mala tafalun. Kabura maktan in the lahe antakulu malat afalun. Very short verses, but there is a big reality concealed within these verses. O Jamaat Mominin, see it is addressed to Jamaat Mominin. That means who are not Jamaat Mominin will be doing this. So if we do this as well, what is stated here, then of course we have to reflect very carefully that what exactly we are doing and why are we going against the laws of Allah. Whatever is stated above, ponder on it and see what conclusion the immense system of the universe makes you reach. Does it not reach this conclusion that each and everything in it demonstrates by its functioning what its duties are? And so you should also present the proof of your iman through your deeds. Never do this, that. So Quran first presents the outer universe and says that how things are working very smoothly in this universe. And why are they working smoothly? Because they are following Allah's laws and they are not making any noise, any vibration, anything. You utter great claims from your lips and never demonstrate these by acting on them practically. That is, you talk a lot and do very little. Whatever you say through your tongue, prove it by acting fully on it. Harmony between word and deed is the proof of the truth of the claim to Iman. According to the law of Allah, this is a very lamentable and punishable matter that such words are uttered which are not followed by any action. Because words don't create anything in the world. It is the deeds which follow after the words, after the commitments which bring change in the world. Now let us look at some of uh, these uh, points a bit more uh, closely. Every moment of our life needs to be valued. Here the Quran has drawn our attention to our thoughts which lead to talking and making conversation in our daily life. It covers both aspects of our conversations, i.e. firstly aimless and meaningless exchanges which lead to nothing and result in wasting valuable time in our life which should be utilized for useful work and activity which benefits us as well as those around us. Recognition of this aspect will help bring a change in our thinking because if we do not accept the negative side of this waste of time, then how are we going to act on the second aspect? So that is important if we think that by talking a lot in aimless and meaningless conversations, 
it doesn't affect our psyche, then we are sadly mistaken. Over here, Quran is saying that it affects your psyche and as a result, it slows you down. Because that tendency to waste time in life uh, is, is promoted and you, you get a proclivity of talking more and more and also like gossip and other useless social activity. So there is a lot of interconnection with other aspects of our life if we waste time in these things. Secondly, our words as human beings carry importance and we are accountable for them in relation to our psyche and its development. And this is part of the functioning of the law of requital. Wasting time on useless talk means that we do not understand the significance of the finite time available to us in this life, and each wasted moment is a loss to the development of the self. Next point is the society in which there is a great deal of talk while the problems keep multiplying. The Quran declares it to be consigned to hellfire, and its glaring cause and sign is, وَكُنَّا نَخُودُ مَا الْخَائِدِينَ and we should look at these verses and the verse, this verse and the verses prior to this, and we will understand that what Quran is saying. We used to talk vanities with vain talkers. We can witness this in the word of 2023. Now, continuing on, on these two verses, those words of ours also have an impact on the life of those with whom we interact, because in our families, with our children, with our relations, friends, where we do job, all these affect each other. And if, and if we make a commitment and then do not fulfill it, then over and above wasting time, we also create imbalances in society. For example, this creates mutual mistrust and encourages others on whom we have influence to not fulfill their commitments. There is an important effect on our psyche as well as on the psyche of others. If a commitment is not fulfilled, the other person may not be in a position to inquire about it. That means the delay will cause him anxiety and may even lead to breeding mistrust. Any commitment made with anyone creates a perceived expectation and this affects the human psyche. This expectation stays in place until such a time that the commitment is fulfilled. Another important point is that it does not mean that we remain quiet and do not do any deed as far as possible. Not at all. Deeds need to be carried out so that our self develops. As the Quran states, kullo nafsin bima ka No deeds, no self-development. It is that simple. Because if we keep talking and do nothing and do not follow what we say, or we do not stop uh, involving ourselves into meaningless conversations, then our self will not develop and we will waste very valuable time of our life. The law of requital helps us to make the right choices and the more deeds we do on this path, the more we develop. Let us go to the next verse, 61.4, being prepared to lay down life is part of the deal for deen. In Allah, Allah does not approve of those people who engage in empty talk. He approves of those who come out when required into the battlefield, fully prepared for the establishment and strengthening of the deans of the divine system. And then fight firmly in columns, as if they are a wall which has been strengthened by molten steel. Pursuit of deen should be taken seriously. This verse defines the upper limit of striving in the path of Allah, which is being ready and willing to sacrifice even our life for this cause of Allah. However, the condition which is outlined is to do this as part of a jamaat, i.e. coming together. In ranks and files. When we look at verses like this in the Quran from an individual perspective, this may create some kind of fear. Wherever there is a fear of uh, our life, our loss of our life, there is bound to be a fear. But over here, what Quran is saying is that by coming together, you will be able to counter it. And secondly, by coming together, the signs will appear in your life that your self is developing. So it is not a one day step. It is a step. It is, it is something we have to do for the rest of our life till the time we leave this uh, world. However, if we reflect on these a bit more closely, this is part of the procedure and process of forming a jamaat together as mumineen, which leads to acquiring a new self, which acquires this new psyche through chronic teaching and training and clearly perceives the assurance of the hereafter. The creation of fear is connected to the unknown. Something which is well known based on knowledge produces confidence and the assurance of success. 
wherever success is assured, 100% fear totally disappears. So the path of the Quran that is striving on this path is 100% success because this is the path or this is that level of self-development which goes through our physical death. So this is not something which is otherworldly. This is part of our living right in this world. We have seen that hypocrisy creates uncertainty and fear because of following the wrong path. And if this path is changed through Iman and Salih deeds, then such people can become an integral part of the system of deen inwardly as well as outwardly. Let us go to the next verse, 61.5. Learn from historical accounts. This was the condition of the people of Musa who engaged a great deal in vain talk and at the time of action would start to make excuses and in this way used to become troublesome for their messenger. Therefore, these were the circumstances in which Musa used to say to them that, why do you continue to be a cause for trouble and anxiety for me? Even though you know that I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, hence the path on which I am directing you is the one proposed by Allah and is for your own benefit. But despite this, they did not refrain from their wrong path. When they continued to tread crookedly, then the consequence was that according to the law of requital of Allah, their intellect and reasoning also became twisted. Just see if the thinking changes, our outlook changes. And that is important thing to which the Quran is pointing here. The law of Allah is that those people who deliberately step in the direction of wrong paths can never reach the intended destination. And this is a very obvious conclusion that if we follow the wrong path, we can never reach the right destination. Have you seen that when it is stated that Allah turned their hearts away, what is meant by this? That this is the consequence of their, that is their own deeds and path. Whatever the kind of path, the same kind of consequence according to the law of Allah. This is what is called the Mashiach of Allah. Quitting the pattern defined by way leads to loss in life. This verse covers important aspects of the human psyche prior to coming towards the guidance of Allah. Those who come to the guidance of Allah assume that others will also become attracted as they themselves have accepted Iman and learnt the benefits of the system of deen. By quoting this example, the Quran has guided us in this regard. Because the messenger of Allah, we know his life from the Quran that before coming to the way of Allah, he went through a number of trials and tribulations in his life. And when he guided his people and they came out of the slavery of Pharaoh, then they also wanted to revert back to the previous ways. This is to what the Quran is drawing our attention. Musa and Harun were fully convinced of the way of Allah. However, Bani Israel had remained under the subjugation of the pharaohs of Egypt for a very long time, and they had acquired the outlook of slaves in which people just obey their masters, accepting it to be a fate accomplished. Because slaves think this is the way life is and their children also are brought up in the same environment and their psyche becomes the same. So they need horrendous amount of education and training and continuous motivation and think, and think that nothing can be done against it. Musa arrived and informed them that there is a better way to live life and he revived the message of Wahi which they had forgotten with renewed Wahi from Allah. Some did accept this and the Quran says that it was those among the youth who started to think rationally about the permanent values. And we have covered part of these things previously in our presentations where youth were the ones who then responded to the message of Wahi. However, most did not accept it in their hearts, hence they continuously complained and caused distress to the messenger. And see, this complaining is also covered under this, uh, this meaningless conversation business that when we say something, we should be very careful in what we say and how it impacts on others and it impacts on our own psyche. Any frustrated talk, which is not based on facts, frustrated talk means that it is not based on facts, it is some kind of a concoction of our own, will always slow us down, will also always put doubts in our own heart and mind. The verse states the permanent value at the end that la yahdil kaumul fasikin, those who are fasikun can never get guidance as they decide not to seek it. 
that is they fall outside the pattern of the way of allah let us go to the next verse 616 continuation of wahi of allah culminating in the final book of guidance the quran wa is qala e sabnu maryama ya bani israila inni rasulullah alaykum muddiq lima baina yadayya min al taurat wa mubashshiran bi rasul yati min badi ismuhu ahmadu falamma jaum bil bayyanat qalu haza sirum mubin This was that nation of Bani Israel to whom their last Nabi Isa ibn Maryam had said that I am sent to you as the messenger of Allah and whatever had come to you in the Torah that is the previous books I have come to demonstrate its truth and I also gave you glad tidings of another Nabi of Allah who will come after me his name will be Ahmad but that Bani Israel which remained as a trouble for Musa himself and who did to Isa that which is well known how could they have accepted iman easily on this messenger to come and remember bani israel were also people of the book when azrat isa came to them and uh, and it becomes very difficult for people of the book to accept something which they think that they are on the right path therefore when the messenger too has come now arrived and has brought clear laws with him they say that this is not the way of allah this is a clear lie which is which he has concocted himself expanding on this verse keeping in mind the historical context is important in the dissemination of the quran this verse has an important aspect about a prophecy about the arrival of the last messenger of allah who is referred to here with the name of ahmad this is an attribute i e one who carries out the hamad of allah and that is important point the question over here is not that ahmed was his name the question over here is what he did what he accomplished by following the quran and if we if we know that quran says alhamdulillah rabbil alamin that hamd is for the rub of all the time and all the words which means that if you go through this quran then you will be able to understand the connotation of hamd Um, there is not some kind of a praising of Allah. Allah doesn't need our praises. What it means is that we have to come to appreciate after the establishment of the Deen that what what Allah has stated in the Quran is truth and it is for our own good. And this aspect is covered in detail in the meanings of the Quran, Volume One. Since all messengers brought the same wahi with the same permanent values, hence they all confirmed the consistency and uniformity of the guidance of Allah to mankind. Here, the example of the messenger Isa is quoted with reference to Bani Israel. He came to them and confirmed the guidance in the Torah, which was in line with the wahi of Allah, and pointed to that tampering which was inter- which was the product of the religion invented by the priesthood priesthood of that era. same tampering through concocting of ahadith took place in islam the quran remains preserved and protected by allah himself that is the original text of the quran remains preserved and protected and that is a great blessing for us because we can always go back to the source and benefit this obviously was very objectionable to these people as it impacted their religious commerce they were not interested in the news of the messenger arriving later as they were not interested in the way he brought by the messenger isa even at that time and who himself was present among them hence they declared his message to be a lie next verse 617 the quran helps to prevent us from doing injustice to ourselves wa man azlamu mimma niftara ala allah al kaziba wa huwa yud'a ila as salam wallahu la yahdi al qaum az zalimin the mention of this messenger is within their own books but in order to prove him to be a liar they tamper in these books and say that allah has not stated it like this it is stated like that hence he cannot be that messenger whose glad tidings isa had given Say to them that this conduct of yours, that you concoct whatever matters come to your mind and then relate these to Allah, is a severe crime in the court of Allah. And this is something which we should convey it to others as well when we are conveying the message that the world we have created around us, we will keep suffering in it unless we change our path. Just reflect that the way in which you reject this messenger for what purpose? What wrong thing is he telling you? He invites you to Islam. That is for your own benefit. You can develop yourself and understand the system of Deen, and then establish it. 
i.e. to that deen which the Ambi of Bani Israel used to present, but which has not remained with you now in its original shape. Remember, those people whose conduct is such that they simply do not let anything remain in its correct place, which is called Zulm, the correct path of life never opens before them. If people do injustice and then at the same time they read the Quran, they can never ever understand the Quran. They have to stop doing injustice first. They have to to come to this path seeking truth and are should be ready to give up what wrongs they have been doing even under the man-made system. Because that is important. The psyche has to first understand and free itself from all the burdens of their previous existence. And then the Quran starts making sense and it guides us on towards the system of deen. Some further reflections on this verse. Continuing from the previous verse here, the Quran refers to the human psyche of that time and also for all times for our guidance. When people are not looking for guidance, if it happens to arrive and since it goes against their base desires, they reject it initially, goes against their desires and then start to oppose it. And it's very interesting. Now, why do they oppose it? Okay, you don't like it. Go on, keep living your own life. But why do you feel uncomfortable with people who do not want to follow your path? And that is something which needs our very, very uh, profound attention. That why do people do that? This mentality of theirs is confronted by stating that if they concoct lies to counter the guidance of Allah, then they are ruining their own self as it is counted as a gross injustice as per the law of requital. We can witness the evidence of this for the last many centuries as Muslims have done the same as was done by the people of the book, i.e. created their own version of Islam. I put it under inverted commas. That is, they abandoned the pure Quran and as a consequence continue to suffer both in this life and will also have nothing in the hereafter. A non-Quranic self leads to becoming unqualified for the life of the hereafter. We have gone over these points and their various aspects in our previous presentations as well. But I thought as a reminder we should put it here and in case somebody first time looks at this presentation then he or she should pay some attention to it. Because there is a serious side of it. We think that we live in this life forever. That is not a fact. We are going to die at some point in time. The way of Allah can never be comprehended by those who are in a state of zulm, i.e. are doing injustice to their own self and hence are a willing part of man-made systems which are based on injustice. By concluding it with this, Wallahu la yahdil qawmiz zalimeen, the Quran has noted the principle for obtaining guidance. If previously it said Fasikin, that is those who fall outside the pattern. And if we do injustice, of course, we fall outside the pattern defined by the Quran. Now we will go through two verses, eight and nine. Deen of, Deen of Allah is awaiting to be implemented in the human world. These two verses require a lot of reflection uh, from our side because these define some very intricate and important points towards the establishment of the system of deen in the world. Do you think that with such actions you can extinguish the divine light, the Quran, you will never succeed in this goal of yours? Just think, can the lamp of the sun be extinguished by someone blowing air? Allah will ensure that this light of His is completed and spread everywhere regardless of how burdensome this may be to the kuffar. Over here, Quran says, Mutimmu nurehi. I take it in two ways. One is that at the time when these verses were revealed, the Quran was going to be completed and it was somewhere in some stage of completion. And second is, it is also an instruction for us that Allah will help us to establish this deen in case we remain united and work for the system of deen. And that is both aspects should be kept in mind from my perspective. Allah is he who has sent this messenger with the code of guidance, i.e. by giving that system of life which is absolutely based on truth, so that this system overwhelms all battle systems of the world. No matter how irksome this may be to those people who, rather than obey the laws of one, Allah wish to obey the commands of different deities. 
two verses sum up the purpose of the human creation in this world. The Quran is called Kajakum min Allah nurum wa kitabum mubin. The light from Allah to make things clear. And we know that the light does not need another light to make things clear because Quran, Quran says that it is a light and we do not need anything else to make the darknesses and what lies within the darknesses and to remove the darknesses because when the light arrives, all types of darknesses disappear. And to explain those realities and aspects of human life which relate to the human self, this is for those who seek to be guided and wish to avoid the pitfalls of living in this world. So there has to be a level of concern within us because unless we are concerned, we cannot make effort in that direction. For example, if, if we don't have interest and need, we will never read a book. And if we do not have interest in the problems around us and we do not wish to find out the solutions for that, then we are not going to come to the Quran and try to find out that what is the alternative to man device systems. This is a firm commitment from Allah to which our attention is drawn and we need to come to grips with the reality of this through commitment by delving deeper into all the aspects of being Mormon and Muslim. And we shouldn't be scared of it. Actually, we should look forward to it very passionately and and with a lot of motivation, because there is a lot lies in the Quran, which expands our we and which gives us confidence that we are not in an aimless uh, and meaningless universe. This is a universe where Allah's help is always available. And, uh, and we become partner and companions in that effort. And when we join with others with a similar outlook, then things start to take shape. Those who, having received the guidance of Allah and acquired that precise iman, should know that now their purpose of life and the aim of their creation, as explained in the Quran, have become compatible, should now keep progressing on this path of theirs. And this light of theirs will never be extinguished if they stick to this path. There is no doubt that those who reject this guidance and oppose it will try to extinguish it. But they simply cannot do this because this light of Allah is placed beyond their reach. Huck gradually gains strength and the flame lit on this path becomes stronger and stronger. Now, continuing on this aspect, this guidance of Allah has been sent for all times as it became as and as it became successfully established in the initial era, it has the potential to become established in any subsequent era too, if Mominin rise, unite, and strive on this path under its guidance. Any chemical formula which is not used does not mean it loses its efficacy forever, not at all. As and when someone revives it and utilizes it, the results will always be the same as it presented once before. And that is a fact. We see it in the physical world, in, the, in, in, in a chemistry lab, we can see that working. Same is true about the Quran, that its formula is for all times and the one who is presented this formula is presenting himself as ever present and is asking us to follow his laws and see how these laws help us to establish this system. The same is applicable to the Quranic formula for the system of deen. It is for all times. And we should firmly embed in our heart. We can take time, doesn't matter if we take a few years, but it should finally find its place in our heart and should start growing as a seed. Here another reality is presented before us when Allah stated a fact which is going to be enacted at some point in time, that it will overwhelm all systems, man-made systems in the world. And if this is a fact, and if we can see this fact clearly, then that will solve our problem and we will become very steadfast and firm-footed. This deen of Haq will become established and it is going to be through the hands of the jamaat e mumineen The issue to remember is that this system will arrive to solve human problems created by man device systems and will relieve mankind from fear and grief in which they live. Obviously, if I like fear and grief in which I'm living and I like the chaos and conflict around me, then I'm not going to work for this system. And all the verses in the Quran related to the system of deen will never make any sense to me. But if I am myself not happy with the fear and grief and I can palpably feel it and I also see the chaos and conflict in the world and if I have a pain and ache in my heart for other fellow human beings who are exploited across the world, 
then this system is for us. Then this solution is for us. And then we should try to follow this path with full efforts of ours and then see how the changes take place within our own self and in the selves of those who come together with us. The procedure for this is explained in detail in the Quran and we have gone through some salient features of this and can relate these to the world in which we reside in 2023. What is noted over here is in 2023 we should look around and then see that how the Quran relates to these aspects uh, through its message. And if somebody is reading, let's say, in 21, 23, and by then deen is established, at least they will know that what kind of a world we were living in in, in the past. 6110, doing business with Allah as a shareholder. Ya yuhalla zina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. A short verse with a word of facts hidden in it. And, and there is a lot for human psyche in, these, uh, in this verse. O jamaat mumineen come and I will tell you about a supreme principle of life. See how Allah is motivating us, those who have come to this path. How it is motivating that come and join me and see that how by sharing in his business, things will change in your world. Every individual in the world wishes to enter into such a business in which he earns benefit. No individual wishes to abandon his interest. The individual who does not look after his profit and loss is called insane. The requirement of being rational is that man should look after his interest. So Quran wants us to look after uh, our interests, but those interests should be defined within the guidance of Allah. This is a good thing. This is the demand of the human instinct of self-preservation. But you also witness that man also enters into those transactions in which, the, which he suffers loss rather than profit. This is because he could not assess accurately about that transaction. Now just think that if you could find out about such a transaction in which there is never any loss, then how good this news will be. That is by following this path, Quran is saying that you will 100% benefit. There is no question of loss. Because the whole thing is at the level of human self and physical uh, changes which take place as a consequence of uh, following this path are intrinsically linked to that psyche. Come, let us tell you about such a business in which there is never any possibility of loss and in this way it will save you from that sphere chastisement which is the outcome of a loss in business. 6110 what it means to do business with Allah as a partner and companion. Now the Quran points to some important aspects of progressing towards the establishment of this system of deen. The first point to note is that the addressee of Allah here is the jamaat e the collective form not as individuals because the agreement is made with Mu'mineen as a jamaat. And we have gone through this verse previously as well as Surah Toba where Mumineen make a covenant with Allah by selling their life, that is self as well as possessions, in return for the system of deen. Note, this issue is also noted in verses 63, 9 to 11, and we have covered it under Surah Manafikun. Attention is drawn to the business of life in the human world. We know how seriously businessmen take their business enterprises, for example, under the capitalist system. Here Allah is inviting us to join with him in an important business, i.e. the business of his creation, in which man is the most important employee and also companion as far as this world is concerned. I put down as far as this world is concerned because this is the only world which is in front of us. We can see the business, uh, universe around us, but the proof of life as far as we are concerned exists in this world, so we need to confine to this and remain focused. Note an important aspect of the law of requital, i.e. if we decide not to enter into this business with Allah as a par partner, then the way in which the human psyche functions, divide or way it will be unable to develop itself. And this is an important point because if we look around and see how businessmen in this world with how much devotion they work to make money, to multiply, to expand their business, and we need to understand that and then be even more firm-footed on this path of Allah as his junior companions. This is not a threat or effort by Allah to coerce us into an agreement. 
not at all. There is no compulsion in deen. The Quran clearly defines it. And if we go through this verse again, it clearly says that you will take this path by through your free volition, by seeing the benefits of it, by moving away from the man-made system and rejecting it and saying, I do not accept this system of Tagut. I'll go to the system of Allah or Rushd. It is just to provide us with another choice. Without this, we only have the one choice of doing business on our own terms. And this is something which needs some attention from our own self, that if we remain within the man-made system and think there is no other choice, this is a terrible way of living life. Whereas Quran is creating another choice for us and telling us that you don't have to live with fear and grief and miserable under the man-made system. Come to the concept which we are giving you and then see how things develop. Next verse 61, 11, including Allah in life's business adds certainty to the life of Mu'mineen. Tu menuna billahi wa rasoolihi wa tujahiduna fi sabilillahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum zalikum khairullakum in kuntum talamoon. And that business is that you should have complete conviction in the truth and permanence of that divine system which is being established through the hands of his messenger. You should strive with all your might for the establishment and strength of this system. Make your wealth and possessions also available for it. And if the need arises, lay down your lives for it. If you reflect by employing your knowledge and vision, you will see how great is the profit in this business. Iman helps to understand the needs of deen as a system. Let us go through some fur further reflections. Continuing from the previous verse here, the outlines of that business are laid bare before us by Allah. We need to analyze these details from the perspective of our self-development and feel the pleasure and joy implicit in what is noted in this verse. So the important point here is that what Allah is is telling us and making us ourselves to convince ourselves on this path is willingly with pleasure and joy, no compulsion. If there is a compulsion and there is a fear that maybe I want some kind of a swab in the hereafter, then we have to sit down again and again and make an effort. Discuss with others who understand this aspect because this is important. If we leave it there and do it mechanically, then we will be in loss. Let us proceed to look at what lies in this for us in this life. Become Mu'mineen by accepting Iman in Allah and his guidance as the messenger did. And then despite the affection for wealth, make your wealth and your own selves available for this business of yours with Allah. And strive on this path chosen by all of you together with a common goal in front. Why should you do that? We have seen that Quran emphasizes a lot on making our wealth available. Without making wealth available, we simply cannot understand the Quran, which is related to the system of deen. It has to be made available on this path. It is not a common charitable things which we do by, by emotively reacting to something that there's a flood somewhere and we help them or one of our relatives has fallen sick and we have helped them or somebody has begged and we have helped them. Over here, the things are totally different. If we want to understand the Quran and its system of deen, we have to willingly become partner into it and, and contribute to that, uh, those efforts which are towards the system of deen. The latent potentials placed within each one of you cannot be brought out under the man-made systems as these systems simply cannot cater for the needs of human selves. The concept of doing business with Allah as a partner and companion simply does not cross the human mind without the guidance of Wahi. Next point is under Wahi, each of your choices will keep becoming khair for you and this will lead to successes and prosperities as per the Mashiach of Allah. And this is explained in, in, in different uh, styles in the Quran. For example, if we look into towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, there are a number of verses on that which put a, a very detailed light on these aspects of human psyche. Next two verses, 61, 12 to 13, security and protection is important. Yaqfir lakum zunubakum wa yudkhil kum jannatin tajri min taati al anharu wa masakina tayyibatan fi jannati adnin zalikal fawzul azim. Wa ukhra tuhibbunaha nasrum min allahi wa fathun kareeb wa bashiril mu'mineen. 
This system will provide such means for you from which you will be saved from those ruins which keep chasing you and will bestow such paradisical life on you. In this world and the life of the hereafter, in whose freshness and prosperity there will never be any diminution. As a metaphor, extremely pleasant abodes within perennial orchards. This is a supreme achievement and success for whoever achieves it. Other than this, there is another thing too which you desire greatly, i.e. your government will become established not only in the Arabic Peninsula but also outside it and other places. For this you will get the complete support and help of the law of Allah due to which the paths of success will keep opening up before you one after another. O Rasul, proclaim this glad tiding to your companions, that is Jamaat Mumini. And of course, over here, Rasulullah himself understood it first. Some further reflections. In the establishment of any system, there are always risks involved, and through good planning, these risks are required to be identified and measures taken to avoid any loss or harm. Here, the Quran has drawn our attention to this aspect on two levels. Firstly, remember mistakes will be made on this path, i.e. Zanubakum. And, and we know Zam means some issues or some faults, some weaknesses, limitations. These could be externally imposed or imposed by own, our own self on our, uh, within us. And these need to be identified and many of these will occur due to confrontations with Batil. Batil will use all kinds of tactics to counter Haq and this will include those challenges posed by hypocrites too. So battle over here means those destructive forces which do not want the system of Allah, which is for constructive results to get implemented in the world. As a result, man, mankind can enjoy some better days. Secondly, obedience to the permanent values will make Mumineen eligible for the protection of the laws of Allah, for example, by adhering to the law of requital and the law of respite will lead to organizing security and making better decisions. Secondly, obedience to the permanent values will make Mumineen eligible for the protection of the laws of Allah, for example, by adhering to the law of requital and the law of respite will lead to organizing security and making better decisions. Then the Quran assures Mumineen that striving on this path will lead to fulfillment of their wishes as these meet the criterion of the Quran. The higher and ensured expectation provides motivation and incentive to stay firmly on this path of Allah. So Quran is not asking us that you will expect these changes over a very short period of time. It could take years. In fact, it could take whole of our life if enough people don't join in. But the issue over here is individually as well as collectively that we should stick to this path and keep progressing. 61.14, why Allah needs help of Mumineen. Ya Yuhalazina Amanu Kunu and Sara Lahe Kamakala Isabnu Mariama Lil Hawari Yina Min and Sari Ilalahe Kalal Hawari Yuna Nahnu and Saru Lahe Fa Amanat Thai Fatum Min Bani Israela Wa Kafarat Thai Fatun Fa Yadna Lazina Amanu Allah Aduvihim Fasbahu Zahirin. But Allah will not do all this automatically. In the human world, his program becomes accomplished through the companionship of men by their hands. And so jamaat e become the hands and arms of Allah for the establishment of this system. And this is not some new demand which is being placed on you. Even before this, wherever such efforts were undertaken, these were through human hands themselves. For example, Isa ibn Maryam had also said to his devoted companions that Tell me who among you will become my companion and, and helper in the establishment of the system of Allah. In response, they said in unison that we are the companions and helpers of Allah in this goal. Remember, Bible paints a totally different picture where, you know, they, they think that these the companions of Isa actually betrayed him. That is not true. It was the outcome of these efforts of theirs that a category of Bani Israel accepted Iman in the truth of this system. But the other group became an opponent. When there was a tussle between the two, we helped those people who had Iman in this deen against their enemies and they overwhelmed them. This is what took place at that time. The same will happen now. Among this nation of opposing people, one such people will rise up and will make the program of Allah a success by confronting these opponents of deen. 
the support and help of the law of Allah will be with this Jamaat. Further reflections, the beginning of this verse is a very forceful statement from Allah addressed to Jamaat al-Mu'mineen. And I picked the, this up when I went through this verse a few times. Quran says, Ya Allah amanu kunu ansar Allah. That, O oh, Jamaat al-Mu'mineen, who have come together as Mu'mineen, you help Allah. Because Allah needs your help. And that makes it very clear that in this world, whatever responsibilities Allah has defined in the Quran on his own self, those are to be carried out by Jamaat al-Mu'mineen. So if the world of 2023 is full of chaos and conflict and fear and grief and tyranny and, and enslavement, then obviously we have to reflect on these verses. O oh, you who have Iman, be helpers of Allah. Why does Allah need the help of Mu'mineen? The purpose of the creation of man possessing choice plus intent is to act as a creator in the world by making choices at every crossroads of his finite life. In the forming of these choices, he is left totally free, but not in terms of the effects of his choices. And that is important. I am free to make choice whenever I come to a crossroad in life, but I am not free to get the results of, uh, results of my own choice by following a wrong path. So that is what the Quran is emphasizing again and again. Here the law of requital decides what will be the outcome of every one of his choices. And imagine that if we keep doing good and keep progressing together on this path, and then how much good we are sending forward, and that good as it keeps multiplying and materializes at some point in future, then suddenly the effects and the results will appear before us. And while proceeding on this, we are also getting clear signs from the Quran of the development of our own self. Man is also shown two paths of life, either to follow his own desires under the guidance of his emotions and intellect and create chaos and conflicts in the world, or to follow the path defined by the way of Allah. With the former choice, he is bound to create problems in the world where he pursues his own vested interests. While with the later choice, he solves all those problems created by following the path of his unbridled desires, emotions, and intellect. Finally, to conclude Surah Al-Saf, then the verse quotes the example of the messenger Isa and his disciples who carried out tasks as defined by the way of Allah. An interesting point is noted here for our guidance that among Bani Israel of that time, despite claiming to follow the guidance of Allah, some did obey it while others transgressed it. This aspect is also true today as it is related to the trait of choice and intent. Despite reading the Quran, many people do not wish to follow the path presented by it, and in fact only a minority finds any appeal in its guidance. The Quran then makes it clear that here the question is not about those who decide not to follow it. The issue is the success of those who do decide to strive on this path defined by way of Allah. In the case of the messenger Isa, he, he and his companions met with success. We need to ignore here what is noted in the books of Christianity. And that is important. That what is given, for example, in the case of history, of Muslim history as well, which is actually history of Muslims rather than the history of Islam, which, which uh, took a different uh, turn after the f initial era. That we should rely on the Quran because Quran guides us. And Quran has also said, these were the people who have passed away. You will not be asked about them. So we have to start with a clean slate in, in 2023 or let's say for the last few years. So that is important for us that what is noted in the Quran, we have to acquire firm belief in it, have Iman and then proceed, keep proceeding forward. Those who traded on sirat e mustaqim they benefited and the same is true today. Thanks for your time and for sharing this today. Please feel free to share it with your contacts. You may like to subscribe for future talks related to the Quranic system of Deen.